Well, hey, what's up, Jets fans? This is Green Bean, and welcome back to another video. Crazy, man. I am happy to be back. I was in bed for five straight days. Five. I come out of the darkness, out of a bedridden week or so of madness, and I look online, and what do I see? But an angry Makai Becton. Guys. This is the kind of stuff that makes me happy. Now, I'm not happy that a guy like Makai Becton is unhappy. I'm not happy that people get messed with. I'm not happy that internet trolls like to poke at people with that protectionary measure called anonymity. It's like standing behind your mother in eighth grade and the other kids are over there. You're about to fight and your mom's in between you and you're still talking crap while the kids can't hurt you. That's what internet anonymity does. That's what it looks like to me. It's a funny thing where Mackay Becton is concerned. The truth of the matter is, is that many Jets fans, for whatever reason, have decided to completely give up on this guy. Completely give up. Not only have a lot of people given up on him, but they've even decided to become antagonistic poking him, make fun of him, stuff like that, which I don't even understand. I, I truly don't. I mean, maybe somebody can educate me on how it is that he goes from a first round pick who completely neutralized guys like Nick Bosa in uh, live NFL action, completely took him out of the game, goes from that 14 games his rookie year in the conversation for Pro Bowl as a rookie, gets rolled on, misses the season, and now People are completely given up on him, completely, as if he's gone already, as if he's not going to be on the team. We're talking about using our top asset this year, the fourth overall pick, to replace him, to draft his exact position because he's as good as gone. So a lot of this comes from some articles that we saw in the offseason last year. We saw... The Mackay Becton's eating himself to death. We saw someone say he was 40 pounds overweight, which let's just put this in perspective. The guy came in at 267. That's how we drafted him, 265, 267. So that would mean he's 407 pounds. That's what we were led to believe. So he's 407 pounds. He's eating himself to death. And then we use the fact that Carl Lawson is beating him in camp as a reason to believe that the guy's washed. I want to remind us two things. One, he's 22 years old. He's 22 years old. He's two years in the NFL, one of which was very, very strong. Number two, every time that we've seen these reports come out, we've seen something else like a physical video or a photograph come out and be the exact opposite. Thank goodness his trainer continually feels the need to put out videos of what Makai Becton's doing and what he looks like. It's not so much what he's doing, right? Like anybody can go into a video and work out for an hour and film it and go, look at me, look how great I am. Anybody can do that. I mean, it's good that he's doing it, right? But it's anybody can make it look like they're doing something for a, a, a 20 second clip, right? But it's how he looks while he's doing it. Now, we'll take a look at some of these videos throughout the video, but I want to make sure that, that we really take a look at what it is we're talking about here, who it is we're talking about, why it is we're talking about him, and where this all comes from. So, we have reports completely speculative. Nobody has seen anything that leads us to believe that the guy is washed up. Now, let's talk about game one. You could have looked at Mackay Becton in game one of the 2021 season and said, wow, man, he's having trouble. But the entire offensive line was having trouble. Do you remember what that game looked like? Something like, what, five, six, seven sacks, something like that? Coming from all angles, our line had no idea what to do. Why is that? It's known to be a, a, a little bit more complex of a system, and guys have a lot of trouble. This was their first game ever playing together. All those very, very real things. Guys tell me, oh, excuses, excuses. It's not excuses. It's real. This is the reality of the situation. First game together, first game in a brand new system, a complex system at that. We watched the offensive line through the first quarter of the season look like they all needed to be replaced. Every single one of them. It, I mean, even AVT looked lost. 
Every single one of those offensive linemen looked like they needed to go out the door and we needed to get a whole new batch of guys. You know, what happened throughout the season? We saw them begin to settle down. We saw them begin to gel. We saw them begin to understand how to pick up stunts and, and react to what the defensive linemen were doing. We saw them be able to do that more. Even guys like Connor McGovern, throughout the season, they started to improve on a weekly basis. Then we went and replaced GVR with LDT. Yeah, I know, we got AVT, GVR, LDT, all these fun guys. But that's what happened. We replaced Greg Van Roten with Lauren Denouverde de Tardif. Okay, so we replaced him with Dr. Blocker, and the line started to settle down. Now, are they there? No. But you could see the improvement. Now, let's whittle it back to Becton. Becton only had that one game. So in the middle of the chaos that was our offensive line, our offense in general, really, don't forget, many Jets fans were calling for LaFleur to be fired week two, week three, week four. That's where we were before he became Mike LaBooth. So we're all talking about LaFleur needs to go, the offensive line needs to go. That's where Mekhi Becton was. He never had the opportunity to come uh, through the season and gel. Now, he uh, his injury lasted longer than we thought. That's one. Of, that's probably the only legitimate gripe that we could have about Mekhi Becton. But now here we are, and we're seeing these social media posts from guys poking at Mekhi Becton, and he's... Just answer him back. Yep, that's it. That's right. You're right. Good stuff. Actually, I think that's probably the best way to handle a troll. You don't get involved. You don't argue back and forth and all that because then it's, you know, it's blood in the water. So he's just responding. You can see him getting a little bit aggravated. He reposts on his Instagram something that CBS Sports put out, which is critical moves each team should make. And they go through the AFC East. And when they get to the Jets, they put this up. Prepare as if Makai Becton is not the answer at left tackle. Again, we're talking about a 22-year-old first-round pick who, again, looked Pro Bowl level his rookie year, and we didn't see him his sophomore year. Prepare as if Makai Becton is not the answer at left tackle. So Makai Becton reposts that and doesn't say anything. So what does that tell you? That's a little, I've about had it. That's what it is. It's, it's Makai Becton letting everybody know, I see you. I see what's going on. I know what you guys are saying. I know everybody thinks I'm, I'm this or that or the other thing, and I've about had it. I see you. So then what happens? Then we see Big Duke, Duke Manyweather, Makai Becton's trainer who has come out on more than one occasion to support him, shows another workout video. Now, the good thing about this workout video that stood out to me is that when Mekhi Becton put it on his stories on Instagram, he put words up there like fat, lazy, bust. He puts all that on there, letting you know I've about had it. Now, this all comes down to this for me. Again, I've been sick. I wake up out of my haze, and I go online, and I see Mekhi Becton getting riled up. Now, again, do I want to see him have to feel bad? No, I don't want him to feel bad. I'm rooting for him. That's what I'm doing. I'm rooting for this guy. But what I will tell you is that it's good news. You couple this stuff with what Salah said at the end of the season. He said, Mekhi Becton's going to have to earn his left tackle spot back. Now, a lot of people tried to take that and say, that means Salah does it like Mekhi Becton. That means Salah... Uh, doesn't want Mekhi Becton. That means that the writing's on the wall for Mekhi Becton. doesn't mean anything. It means that's a good coach doing, his, doing the right thing and inspiring somebody going into the offseason, letting them know. Best 53 play. We've heard that numerous times throughout the season. Best 53 on the field. And you haven't played in a year, and you're going to come back, and you got to earn it in camp. I have zero issue with this. Zero issue. I think people should earn it. Now, once you get into an all-pro player or something like that, maybe you can get a little bit more leniency, potentially, but I think everybody coming on the squad should have to earn their position. That's the way I always thought it was. But the good thing is this. Robert Sala's little fire, these trolling tweets, the videos, all the stuff going out there means one thing. Mekhi Becton's pissed off, and personally, I like it. I want to tell you something, Makai Becton. If you ever hear this, I'm 100% in your corner. I believe in you. I don't like taking 22, 23-year-old guys and labeling them busts and throwing them off in the side. 
it, this, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous anymore. So you just got to go out there and get it. Keep doing what you're doing. Work your ass off. Come back and dominate. And we'll be having an entirely different conversation next year. So what do you guys think? Are you done with Mackay Becton? Are you, th are you through with a 22-year-old 360-pound tackle that you want to replace because he's too heavy with a 360-pound tackle in Evan Neal? This is what we're talking about. Sometimes I think we're nuts. Sometimes I think we've lost our damn marbles. So let me know in the comments what you think. Me, I'm making a prediction. Mackay Becton back to form, full season, domination, and that's what we're going to see. That's what I'm rooting for, and I think nothing else until I see otherwise with my own two eyes. I'm not reading a report that says somebody said Mackay Becton might have been eating himself to death. Ridiculous. Let me know if you're buying the bullshit. Let me know in the comments below. I can't wait to hear from you. I'm, I'm glad to be back. I'm still a little frazzled. I'm not myself, but I'm happy to be back. I got lots of content. We're in Combine Week, baby, and we're going to talk about it all. And videos coming every single day this week. Thanks for stopping by. Can't wait to hear your opinions. And as always, go Jets.